For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's podcast brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 8.17, Things We Lost in the Fire, where we are covering the novel Grave Peril. My name is Tanzan, and I'm joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Hey. Chapter 31. Dresden finally wakes up and learns Michael has been looking out for him. Michael begins to update him on what happened when Thomas arrives. Thomas fills in the blanks and offers a gift. Amaracius. They try to talk to Lydia, but they find out that she is now controlled by the nightmare. So I just gotta say, I really like the chapter title you chose for this episode. Thank you. Things We Lost in the Fire, that's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> right? Kind of gets you in the feels. Yep. Uh, mm. Dresden comes to, he's burned, he's battered, and he is bruised. Mm-hmm. And he is instantly filled with remorse as he remembers all the kids that were trapped in the party. Just all sorts of fucked up. Psyche and magic and body, like, yeah. 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 He's really like, oh, fuck, what did I do? You know, people talk about survivor's guilt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dresden here. And to be fair, I mean... It's not even just survivor's well, guilt, it's causer's past guilt. Past survivor's <laughs> guilt, he's also the cause of a lot of it, so it's like, yikes, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you should, You think you've lived regret before. Mm-hmm. He really breaks down from this realization. He's just torn up. And you've had this kind of building up this whole book, too. Like, there was, like, that moment with Murphy, and it even says a little bit later in this chapter, like, he asks, like, what what is happening with Murphy? And it's like, she's still asleep. It's like, if Harry had died in there... She might never wake up from that coma again, right? And he's the one who put her into it, right? right. Admittedly, to save her from a worser. Mm-hmm. Well, she would eventually, because he did say it'll keep eroding, but it's going to take some time. And when that happens, she was supposed to revert back into, like, the nightmare. The horribleness, so yeah. So Harry had died there without taking out the nightmare. She would have yeah. been worse for wear. Yeah. She would yeah, yeah. be lucky if she stayed in the coma. Right. She'd probably come out of the coma and be chopped back in. And, this is, and we always, as we will also learn later this chapter, you know, both Charity and the baby are also not doing so great right now. Uh, obviously, yeah. you know, as we learn, Lydia's not doing so great right now. <laughs> uh, we're going to learn, you know, throughout the rest of this book, you know, like had Harry died in that fire, right? Or for any other cause. That, from yeah. that night, right? Yeah, if he we would have been, it. you know, so many more fires than he needs to put out by the end of this book, right? Mm-hmm. So on top of that, you know, survivor's yeah. guilt and also being the cause of it, you're also just a little bit like, buddy, like, shit sucks. And again, like, as we, sorry, as I started the sentence, he's been building up all book to having these regrets and having these, like, things he's gonna have to solve later on, right? So it just very amplifies it right now, like, okay, <laughs> now we're really at the morning stage of, like, just how much shit has gone to shit. <laughs> yeah, he really, like, he is in the shower, just sobbing. And, yeah, and well, we kind of get some nice visuals, because he kind of replays, like, what he did. So you've got, like, this towering inferno and everything like that. And again, it just sort of emphasizing, like, the destruction that he caused, that like, mm-hmm. he managed to pull out at the time because of his grief and anger. And, yeah, and then basically he's, like, he manages to, to stumble out of bed and, like, drag himself to the sh- And, yeah, he's, like, somebody must have fed me soup because there was something to bring up when I started heaving, you know. So, yeah, he's, like, just, and I mean, I, I get that. I feel that, like, we've all, I think, been in places where, and I'm one of those people that, yeah, if I've got something, like, major cringy or regret worthy or whatever that, yeah, my stomach is just, like, mm, I'm gonna, you know. Right. Normally I don't, thankfully, but, you know, I, I totally get, like, that it fully visceral him. feeling that he's, yeah, and the fact that, yeah, he's, like, I mean, again, as some of it's coming back to him, I'm like, yeah, you were there, like, it's bad enough for us to read about the burns and the things, but we all know, like, olfactory, that's, that's not a good place to be. We all know how strong right. that is, how connected to memories it is, and to he's, actually be there. And He said before, like, I can't even begin to describe, like, the smell or the sound or the imagery. Like, so yeah, like, the things that we do get, you gotta know, like, just what could he not put down into words? Or Yeah, that right. we get to gloss over so mm-hmm. much of it because, A, it's not explicit and we can just 
you know, do that. Gloss over in our or, own mind. <laughs> even, you know, to to. in nice real fantasy life when we talk about, like, you know, eviscerating vampire stomachs, we can just, like, you know, you, you go on where it's like, no, you had to watch that whole thing happen. You yeah, didn't get to go, like, fast forward, fast forward, skim over. Yeah, and, like, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Michael finds him in the bathroom and takes care of him as if he, almost like he's, uh, he's his father. Yes. He pulls him from the shower, dries him off, and, and he essentially just, Ups he clothes him. him. Like, yeah, it's just, he this, mm-hmm. just completely takes care Mothers of him. Mothers him, fathers him, whatever, yeah. Dres- Dresden asks Michael how many of them died, and he admits that 11, he found 11 bodies. But they didn't, what he didn't know is if they had died in the fire, or if it they was were. the vampires. Yeah. And see, this... <clears throat> Again, because because he's like because he's like how many how many di- how many of them died and he's like he understood, so which makes it feel to me more like he's asking like about the innocence or whatever, right? But then as they continue with this a little bit, um, it says you know that they were hard to he, um, the heat was so intense that the bones hardly looked human, which to me again is referencing the fact that of course well vampires aren't going to look completely. So I was like, so was I was it just- hoping that I was. So was it just eleven, like including the vampires and the? Because at first I thought like Michael was giving him the number of like sort of like human like potential victims of you know I'm like we none of us consider the vampires victims right they were, but then when he says it was hard to identify some of them I'm like well if that was eleven including then I'm like that really lowers the numbers because like, he also says well, you got a bunch of the vampires and I'm like well eleven is not huge numbers if you're talking right, about taking up the them that's that's, not that's a lot if you're talking about. The kids and thing. So I think I just, eleven is a lot. Admittedly, when you know that there was like a hundred kids, but if Harry killed eleven of them in fire, no, that's what I mean. If it's they're talking about the kids, eleven is a lot. If you're talking about because because he's Michael, not talking about the vampires, he says it's a separate thing. He's saying eleven humans. Well, then that comment about he's like because he's like Susan. He's like we don't know. Eleven was all they found. They're checking dental records. They said the heat was so intense that the bones hardly looked human. So if it was only talking about eleven human victims, that would. I mean, yes, again, because Harry makes the comment of how hot fire... But, I mean, I always sort of took that to mean... They're not human they're not, bones. It's not the human bones they're finding. But I think Harry confirms even more when he says, like, that fire would have to be pretty hot for them to start having issues. That that just confirms, like, it was so hot that he started deforming the human bodies that he did get with his fire, you know? And I think it could be maybe, a little bit of both. I guess this is, yeah, just where I'm a little bit not sure. See, and I think... For for how many victims he was, that were, that were, or like the the humans that are already there, for how many vampires that were attacking, and for how many vampires that got consumed by the fire, mm-hmm. I don't think eleven is enough. Well, yeah, because they already killed a whole bunch of vampires before, so those bodies would have like, just been burned in the fire. Is, is it like Buffy? Do they just burst into ash? And see, thus far, that's not how they're dispatched in this. Right, we saw the bodies and stuff like this, and we see future evidence that. That's not the case. But so, yeah, yeah. But that's just where I'm like, yes, it's a lot of human, but anyways, whatever. I just find this a little bit going back and forth that I'm like, I'm not quite sure which way you mean it now, guys. Yeah, there's a little bit of a benefit of the doubt there. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's just, I wish they had, anyways, they make it all sound like they're talking about, but then they make it all sound like they're also including vampires. So I'm like, well, which is it? But yes, if there is 11 bodies just strictly of the human kids or whatever, okay. Then, yeah, that's enough. And we don't know. Like you say, Harry had, you know, did see some of them that were obviously already, but he did see some of them that weren't dead, that were still trying to, you know, make their way out when this thing. So exactly, you know, did he kill just one person and the other 10 were already corpses? Or did he kill five people? Or did he kill 11 people? Or, yeah, I mean, obviously it couldn't have been that because obviously if they, unless the vampires really cleaned out everything before, because he also says that uh, he called for the fire department. And when the guy went in to talk to Bianca, all of a sudden he came out at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> Calm down and relax and let's go. So obviously, you know, Bianca whammied him in some way or another, but... Right. Michael debriefs Harry, and that's when, like, he finds out Mur- Murphy's still unconscious, that the, and the, that's where he finds out that the police department is not on the case, like you said. And that yeah. Susan, Justine, and the sword are still missing. And he lets him know that the baby's still in really yeah. weak condition. Yeah, because Harry asks after. He's like, yeah, I called her. <laughs> he's like, you called? <laughs> right. So he's just, just dumped well, on for just shit information. But, like, to build on that, like, yeah, you called, you didn't go, and Harry and Michael is like, I'm guarding you. Yeah. Like, damn. Like, like, he's like, I bet she love that. Yeah, she's not talking to me. <laughs> dude accepts a job, though. He follows the fuck through. Yeah, yeah a lot of personal sacrifice on his point. Seriously, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly, because he was there 
with Harry, right? So, I mean, Harry goes through a lot. Like, he's doing, like, oh, I was so arrogant. I was such an idiot to go. And, and Michael's trying to, you know, like... Yeah, because then he's like, all those poor, stupid kids paid the price. He's like, well, a lot of vampires didn't make it either, you know? And he's like, it's not worth it. Not a And Michael sort of goes back and forth with him a little bit. But then he's, you know, eventually he kind of comes to the same thing. Like, yeah, he's trying to make him feel better. But at the same time, Michael's like, yeah, well, he did let loose and shit did happen. So, I mean, at least Michael doesn't try to offer a lot of false platitudes that way. You know, he does do his best to sort of comfort him and sort of be like, well, okay, well, you know, we get the reasoning you were working with. But he doesn't continue going. Yeah. He doesn't try to justify it. He doesn't try to you know, provide valid reasoning or whatever. He just kind of goes quiet and sort of lets her, you know, that way, which is again, right. I'm like, I think that's very in keeping with Michael mm -hmm. and, you know, he's not going to cross that and try and make it sound like it's no big deal. But, you know, again, sort of the way that we are, that we want to offer Harry, like you say, the benefit of the doubt. Cause we're like, okay, well, we know, but really you're the hero. So, you know, <laughs> But yeah. yeah, so yeah, and then he finds out that yeah, it's essentially been you know a good day and a half, a couple of days, that he's been passed out for all of this to happen, um, and uh, we're now about two nights later. Yeah, it's it's gonna be day again soon, or something, or just nightfall again soon, daybreak soon. Michael recognizes Lydia from Kravos's lair. Mm -hmm. So that's so it's that little bit of an extra information going. Oh, so that's how she this is the pieces coming together. Ties into it a bit from before and stuff like that. Yeah, One of the people exactly are how yeah. again some of the random threads aren't always all that random. And while it looks like he has six cases on the go, it's only ever one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I th I, there's an interesting part here that uh, like Dresden believes things are going to come back on him karmically. Mm -hmm. But Michael mentions, oh yeah, the laws, the law of three. But then Dresden says that he's uncertain if he believes in it. So he kind of goes instantly back on himself. I was a little bit confused by this because he says when he says karma is going to get him, but then and then he just continues after that to say that he doesn't believe in it. Yeah, like maybe he, I misread that a bit. No, or, I know it's just, it was really see, vague to it's me. It's like the eleven. <laughs> Are you saying there were vampires or there were vampires? Because you just keep going back and forth. So yeah, exactly. He he does. Yeah, because like you say, he says sort of it's going to come back on you. And he's like, oh, I didn't know you read the Bible. He's like, Proverbs always make sense. But he's like, magic, it's a lot sharper and cleaner. Like, it, you know, kind of like he feels like he's saying it's a bit more literal or whatever. Um, and yeah, so he's saying, well, I guess this is not so much because cause Michael says, I thought you didn't believe it. And he's like, well, I didn't. I don't. It's too much. But stop. You know, so this, I think, is where Harry's maybe kind of struggling with it. Is is, is that... Is it that it was, just, was he changing his mind? A little bit, talking? I think. Yeah, exactly. Because he's like, well, I didn't used to be. It seemed too, you know, cut and dried, too clean. That You know, whatever you do, it's going to come back, you know. But now he's like maybe having lived a little more with that magic and especially these last couple of years the way things are now with him getting more heavily into that you know he might be seeing bigger picture and might be seeing how things are coming back more and now maybe it's kind of like oh shit like yeah maybe it didn't matter if my little flick and bickus before if i but now all of a sudden i just you know and some carnage it's gonna yeah that yeah like maybe there is something to all of that well yeah whether or not you believe in karma there's clearly going to be consequences from this. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a lot more of him. He's like, well, whether or not I want to avoid any cosmic injustice, like, shit yeah. clearly is going to... Well, that, yeah, but I'm I think gonna it's clearly have to face the music at some point. The doubling this. down on it and stuff like that is yeah. like, is it going to... Yeah. I think that's kind of what he's saying. Is it going to be worse than just... All right, which is the bare you know, bones of it, you know. And Michael it's even, not an you know, eye for an eye. It's gonna be like an eye for a head now. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, shit. And Michael even says as much as he's like, well, like... <clears throat> the ball was, like, supposed to be the consequences and you lived through them, so you should be good now, right? And Harry's like, ha 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 ha. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is the issue of the white court and the white council and the red court and the black court, which were all there. Plus, right. you know, a dragon was also watching the proceedings. Oh, and so was Leah, so let's throw <laughs> in the fairies. So many like, witnesses. Exactly. Like, so, it's yeah. not just Harry in a back alley with a Kyle and Kelly. Like, this is like, listen, yeah. I was there on official business. Even yeah. if everyone else doesn't want to step into it my own guys have to hit me in the head for it you know like yeah right he was the one that threw the first punch it would just they you know finally made him yeah as much as you know you can say that he was yeah forced into it that don't matter to anyone yeah which is he made that letter choice. which is why bianca is so much of a genius you know like yes. he died doing the right thing and harry says too he's like 
motherfucker. It was okay. right there. We're gonna, yeah. 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 Roll into this. Well, I even like this, because like you say, Michael's like, well, you know, she took her shot and missed, and he's like, do you really think she's gonna keep it? He's like, yeah, he just gives him a look. You know, he's like, of course, and so do you, or you wouldn't have spent... You know, he wouldn't have played watchdog here for the past day. And Michael's like, right, exactly. Michael could have gone mm-hmm. home to his wife and his kid and seen how they were doing and been there. But, right, obviously, it's like there's something in the back of your mind because you stayed and watched over me while I was out of it. So, obviously, you don't feel like it's... <laughs> you don't think that it's over. Yeah, and Michael's mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay, fair. I guess you're right. <laughs> you know, but I mean, again, I'd be talking it out loud like that, too. Like, really? Like, they should have been it. They can't. And this they is the nice thing about Michael, home, but they will. is that we know whenever Michael's in the picture, God is at work, right? Like, you can argue yeah. all day long, like, as, as Harry does, he's like, no, that's Michael. Like, you put way too much on God, and Michael's always like, no, 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 I'm here because, like, if God wanted me to go home, Charity would have demanded I go home right now, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. the fact that Charity is just not speaking to me is allowance that I should be here I was going to say, or whatever, she's you know? pissed, like, but she's not going to tell me to do different kind Things of like, you thing, know, yeah. like, so that's always Michael's thing. And, you know, as someone who's read the entire series, you know, it's a little bit easier for me to be like, yeah, God is a bigger player than Harry's willing to give him credit yeah, for. Well, you know, sure, like, it's yeah. easy. That's, that's the beauty yeah. of being the reader <laughs> yeah, exactly, and being on right? the outside. <laughs> so we can say for ourselves, you know, like, as much yeah. as, like, you know, like, oh, good point, oh, you're still Harry. here, right? It's like, yeah, right? It's like, no, 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 God wants Michael to be here right now for this moment. There's a reason, right? Yeah. Which we see very soon enough. Why is Michael <laughs> still at Harry's? <laughs> well, like, it's also because he didn't know what to do with, yeah, because he's all like, where's Lydia? Oh, she's right here on my couch. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess he could have dropped her off back up Fort Hills or something, but that didn't really go all that well the first time. So I suppose if, you know, she'd wigged out and tried to flee again, that wouldn't have. Dresden starts to try to make plans with Michael, but at, at this point, Michael says that he can't he can't be there for him. That he needs to, he's taking this as a sign that he needs to be there for his wife, his wife and child because this because he doesn't have the sword anymore. Mm-hmm. So he's oh. really like I can't do it anymore. And furthermore, like I think the pressing issue is his son is still in limbo. Like the doctors, like, we don't even know what's wrong right now. Mm-hmm. And like we can all stand off to the side and be like, this is a magical effect. The kid, you know, like. Rory and Amy getting pregnant in the TARDIS like (laughs) a a brand new baby exposed to that kind of shit apparently changes genetic genetic or affects it or something like we can all say like yeah this kid you know Charity went into induced labor because of a psychic nightmare problem right like it's easy for us to say this kid is having issues right but Michael is a little bit more like we don't know like like whatever but the same thing like Michael's entire power works off of faith so he's like I gotta go be with my kid like if my kid has any chance at all he's having my power being powered by faith the best Mm -hmm. thing I can do for my child is to share as much of that faith I've got with me to him, you know, and hope, you know? Yeah. Right. His he presence doesn't really is really having much faith in himself without the sword that he can even, help. Even, yeah. So yeah, that, like, that, that alone just debilitates him. Which is even a little bit funnier to, to say, like, after that whole mess of Bianca's, he did it all mm-hmm. without the sword and we were all like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Well, see, yeah, I would Dude. say he's definitely, I would say he's having the doubt. I don't know that he completely, because that's who he is in that sense of that he's like i have to keep you know what i mean like it's not going to change the core of him that way he's not having faith of like well what was it all for there's no point you know what i mean is that yeah he's like maybe god's telling me it's it's not going to be you know but he but again to michael it's like he's very much still going to be i will be there for my wife i will be there for my kids i will still go to work every day i will still that's what being a man is that's what being you know, and, the, and sort of his faith is just like, you know, doesn't occur to him that you would do that any different, right? He's like, he will still care. He's not going to suddenly be like, I'm sleeping, you know, I'm just going to hang out on the couch and drink all day. Like, I think it's really interesting because he's with, with, with Michael, when he doesn't have a, a chance to think about what's going on, he doesn't he doubt himself. Does. He is just doing what he needs to do and he's into it. He's oh, hello, got no life. <laughs> yeah. But the, the second he, like, the, the, that action stops, he's just like, oh, brain brain takes over and he goes, oh, yeah. I can't do this. But no, you can't, you, you've yeah. been proving that you can. Right? I can relate to that a lot. If you're just, like, doing it, you're just doing it. But as soon as somebody says, hey, you're going to do this, you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. It's well, that- <laughs> a very relatable moment. It's very, yeah. That fully shows, like, how Harry described him at the beginning of the book. is like, he's not self-righteous. He is a righteous, righteous man. man. Like, yes. it's not that he, like, necessarily, like, you know, doesn't believe in what he's doing. But the fact is that he just, like, is so fully, like, places himself in God's hand that he's like, everything I do is for God. 
until he has to think. He's like, wait, was that for God or was that for me? What am I? And right when yeah. he just does it, yeah, he's like, no, everything I do is in the power of his name. Yeah. Until he's like, oh God, I'm just a mortal man. What is wrong with me? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Until yeah. he suddenly realizes that he walked off the cliff and there's nothing underneath him. Yeah. He's fine Oops. when he doesn't stop and think about it. That Hawaii coyote. I oh, get you every time, mm-hmm. hey? Well, so. This is really quite a test of faith for himself. Mm hmm. But I like how it's a test of faith without him having to spiral and go, you know, Harry gets to spiral and uh-huh. go down the path. Harry can be like, right, whereas Michael never actually, right, he can have some doubt and some faltering without having to go against any of his, you know what I mean? I'm like, he still gets to be himself. He still is like always, that. you know, He's faithful still, that no matter what, yeah. God is still in control, whether or not yeah. he wants Michael as a knight of the sword yeah, or not. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean is he doesn't mm-hmm. have to, you know, hit rock bottom and like turn the other way and like go rogue for a while and then come back to it or anything like well, that. It's like, no, it's not mm-hmm. that far of a test. It's just no, enough no. to like. I'm just worried about this. Yeah, I'm worried just, about just this. Shake and the so thing is like, Harry has to constantly wonder like, do I believe in the right things? Is my power enough? Like, he's got to constantly believe himself, whereas God is like, or when Michael is like, God's never going to wane. Well, and that's, so that's always a sturdy balance right there. Like, right, and that's the thing right here when he's freaking out getting in the shower before he starts the conversation with Michael. Is, is that it? He's like, you can't do anything with magic that's not in you. Like, that's where his core and belief, mm-hmm. right? So he's like... I had that anger and destruction in me somewhere for me to be able to pull, like, yeah, they provoked it or whatever. Right? But he's like, that's his whole thing about how he was taught and how he believes in magic is like, you can't, you can't do anything. You don't believe that it. you don't believe it. That you, right. So he's like, for me to obtain, and again, he always refers to it as like the powers of creation and that. Mm-hmm. So anytime he does something really destructive, right. I mean, like, obviously he uses his magic of sure. I'll, you know, pull the gun out of your hands and whack somebody else across the face with it. Sure. I'll send a blast of fire to, you know, get you to move out of my way or whatever, you know, all of that kind of, but yeah, sort of this kind of a thing is just like way beyond, you know, that's not using it for that's creation. That's why he's and so good. afraid of, purely, yeah, um, of how much power. Shadow Man or Mavra or as we see future and future and future dark wizards. He's like, holy shit, the fact that they can make their magic do that means that they're fucked up in the head. So yeah, when he's looking at himself in the mirror, metaphorically or not you know? yeah. <laughs> whether or not he actually has a mirror or not <laughs> right. yeah he's just like oh god like yeah it's like he realizes how easy it is to, to be able to go down that path well exactly right to know that it's yeah he can tell himself he's a good man all the time and but then how am i able to do that he you can know? stand around you know insulting the white council all day long for like you know punishing him for being a self-defense 16 year old killing justin but you've got to understand like this is the same thing they're looking at like if he's capable of killing justin with magic that's in him we've got to be wary of that right yeah which is why you know like it's a little bit funny that harry's always got this dichotomy about him where he's just like fuck you assholes but it's like Mm-mm-mm, hypocrite well again that's like all of us right kids always think they know better but i can't wait until i'm old enough and i can drink pop all day and i can stay up as late as i want and then you become an adult and you're like oh my god pop makes me fatter pop makes me sick or pop is just not good for me and i have to go to bed at eight o'clock because i have to get up and work in the morning <laughs> you know it's like it all sounds wonderful until you get there and you're like oh fuck <laughs> i, I kind of wonder if if harry has this um because he's got this sort of hero complex and he's always really doting on himself and i th- and I, I wonder if that's Doting or trying to get himself to do the right thing mm. always, mm-hmm. and I wonder if this is overcompensation because he recognizes that it would be so easy for him because he's got that he does mm-hmm. have that dark side in it, darkness yes. in him. It, it is present. It's yeah, there. and I think that is, and it'll come more of where Harry. Yeah, that is why he toes the line so hard. Because I mean, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. when you've got Harry at the beginning of every book, when he's generally speaking at the beginning of every book, he's more or less well rested and he's more or less, you know, like things have been calm for a little while and maybe he's like low on rent money or hasn't eaten in a couple weeks, depending on the book. But for the most part, he starts every book tip top, you know, and then you, and you see him being like, that's not morally right or I shouldn't talk to this person. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. when Monica or not, um, not Monica, when Marcone came to him or when. Oh, yeah, it was Monica. Yeah, when she came to him, when Lydia came to him, he was a little bit more eager to be like, get away from me. Like, I don't need your work from you. I need to talk to you. I need to entertain yeah. this, right? But we see in the middle of the books when, like, you know, like, Bianca or, um, or again, Marcone or Kyle and Kelly, like, you know, more of the evil people come to him in the middle of the book. And then he is like, well, okay, let's talk, right? Because it's like, mm-hmm. just it just takes a moment of desperation. And then he's suddenly like, okay, we're evil again. And it's like, it's, no, wait, wait. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, when there's a lot right, more... Like, he, when he's in his tip top shape, he's like, No, 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 we don't we don't mix with those people, we don't know them. But then he takes halfway through the book when he hasn't slept in a couple of days and he's suddenly just like when that's, that's a little bit of like Yeah. A, like 
I'm not I'll evil, this but I can like, yeah, like if I have to team up with you to defeat this other evil, that's fine, I'll right? I'll deal with you after. But yeah. you can kind of see like, yeah, we're at the beginning of the book. He's like, fuck no. And then, <laughs> I don't swear, okay? <laughs> but in the middle of the book, he's like, <laughs> he's like, okay, well, like, we'll team up for this one small thing. Yeah. Only because, you know, Michael and Murphy and Susan well, are all exactly. dead now and, and I have no choice. But <laughs> that's, you know, the very Christian thing with Michael, you know, the whole temptation and stuff like that, right? Like, it's easy to not be tempted when you've got everything you need and don't. But when you're, you know, well, mm-hmm. like you say, you know, yeah. Bill Gates doesn't need to steal a loaf of bread from his local grocery store. You know, whereas the guy that's got nothing, you know, I'm like, well, for him, then that risk becomes and you start to moralize how it's not that bad. It's just the grocery store. It's one. You know what I mean? It's like that whole thing. Yeah. But if suddenly Bill Gates uh, find himself, you know, in a foreign country with nothing and no way to prove who he is or what he is or how he is, you know, well, let's see. Is he going to think about stealing a loaf of bread? Because, you know, once you got to eat, you got to eat. Did Winona really need all that clothing? They're, right? Well, That's... I guess it's a little bit of that, yeah, like, you get to that moral dichotomy of where you start to convince yourself, like, I'm Robin Hood, I'm Aladdin, like, it's okay, like, I've got a bigger picture thing going on here, you know, and... Well, okay, okay, but I was talking about just the general sense of, like, yes, temptation kind of a thing. Well, yeah, you know, It's a lot easier to, you know, if your friends are like, hey, let's, you know, a shoplift but, from this, you know. Like, but Harry's the one who always turns into a Robin Hood. Like, the steal from the rich, give to the poor. Mm-hmm. My reasoning is good. Like, I should be allowed to break the rules because, in the end, I'm doing it for this greater purpose or whatever like that. And then you get these moments of doubt when he's like, but was I yeah. stealing from the rich or did I just steal from some guy? Or well, yeah. was I giving to the poor or was I just giving to me? Like, After the know? fact, again, yeah. yeah. But like you say, that's what I mean. Is like, well, yeah, when you're up high, it's easy to be like, <laughs> Marconi, you suck. But then when you get down in the middle of it, you're like, okay, I'm just going to rob and yeah. hit this shit. And then you get afterward and you're like, oh, well, wait, was that yeah. the right... Well, we'll really but see anyways. in like 11 books or so when he's done who he's willing to make deals with. <laughs> right. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so Michael kind of, anyways, at this point is like, you know, you convinced me to go to the party and stuff like that. Maybe I should really, like, leave you at it for right now. You know, they kind of, they took their shot. We don't know what's going to go. I'm going to go check out my wife and stuff like that. And they're like, okay, yeah, we'll start to regroup. And then... Well, Dresden be- really begins to question, what the hell? This, none of this really adds up. Like, something is off. Mm-hmm. And then, as you were about to say... <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Enters Thomas. And I love this where he's all like, like jumps to the side of it. Like everybody just grabs a weapon for like, <laughs> <laughs> Justin just outright just punches him. Boom. I get, well, yeah, once he opens the door, but it's like as soon as it knocks, they just go into who the fuck is at my door, yeah. <laughs> you know? Which I'm like, okay, I guess you just totally came from a party where I'm trying to kill you. But it's just like so funny that they're just kind of chatting and like recapping and like figuring out and then like one knock on the door and they're like, mm-hmm. and it, and then, yeah, the second he sees who it is, it's like, you bastard. Valid me. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it's funny because, like, the whole time I was, like, reading this book again for the first time, like, a couple, two or three years or something now, was enough for me to be like, how did I get the sword back? I don't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. This is how, yes, he comes with a peace offering. Yeah, he makes a, a plea for them to, to, to just listen that he wants to help. And he really doesn't make a very good plea in some ways. Because he's like, just listen to me. And they're like, why should we listen to you? And he's like, no, no, I'm a totally good liar. You're right. You shouldn't trust me. But I'm like, that's not helping your case right now. <laughs> like, I get there's, there's being honest and being like, you're right. But he's like, you basically, you're like, well, don't. But actually, no, do. Because I need you to for a minute. It's like, <laughs> trust me, even though I'm going to give you reasons why you shouldn't. Exactly. Yeah, basically. Uh, that's yeah. Not how a good like, argument that's works. That's not really what you want to throw in there right now, Thomas. But okay. Well, Thomas yeah. does inform them that Susan is alive, and so is Justine. So yes. he, gives, he, he offers right away that yeah. b- valuable bit of information you know, like that they they don't have. Yeah, and this is where he kind of tried to be, because Justin's like, why the fuck, like, you betrayed us in an instant. And that's where he kind of been like, apparently this is what that look was supposed to mean. Like, really, I was going to help you out right away again. But, you know, but Dresden is still, yeah, like, fuck you and the horse you rode in on. And he's doing a lot of scrambling here, too to uh yeah but he does he has right he has information about what went on afterwards right and, and Dresden does eventually give thomas a chance he sort of sees that he looks sincere enough ish but he can tell at least <laughs> and 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 they get instantly rewarded by thomas for for letting him go and not beating the shit out of him thomas tells him to look in this rifle case which is, which turns out to have Amarakius in it. Da, 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 da. Yes. 
And it's really kind of a funny back and forth because, like you say, Michael and Dresden are generally the good guys, you know? And Harry does usually do the monsters are bad, it's all, you know, and or give people the benefit of the doubt and look beneath, you know? Like with Michael, you can almost understand it a little bit because Michael is a little bit more black and white. Vampire just... Vampires aren't good. They're, yeah, just, they're, they're demonic entities. There's just no... Which is fair, right? But it's like, even Dresden is just like, you know, like you say, he punches him, chucks him across the room. Michael, like, stomps on him, holds, like, a poker to his face or whatever. And he's like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. And Harry's like, yeah, no, I don't feel like waiting. Let's just, you know, and even... Right? But it's just they have sort of this back and forth where it's like, they're really just not gonna, you know, Harry's like, no, I don't want to, I'm just tired, let's just kill him. He's just <laughs> like, he's like, has to keep... You know, you know, and it's just yeah. And to so be fair, though, they would have gone through the rifle case after they killed him, anyways. Right? <laughs> could have killed Harry and gotten the sword out. Of that is true. They could have killed Thomas. Sorry, could have killed Thomas and gotten. But um, <laughs> but yeah, he's just like I don't want to listen to him. And he's like, well, he is a vampire, and he's like, think we should kill him. And they're like, yeah, I think that would be. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is. I I brought up Aladdin. It's in my head now. Um, Star Kid does this musical or whatever like that of um. It's like Jafar, like the, you know, if Jafar was good or what's his story sort of a thing, you right. know, like Wicked. And uh, in Aladdin's song, they make him a much more bad guy than good guy, right? And he's like, um, he comes up to like this bread seller who he stole the bread from that morning. And he's like, I don't remember the exact lyrics, so nobody come for me. But basically, he's like, hey, man, you got to stop putting raisins in it. I hate raisins. I was talking to Monkey. And he says we should just kill you. And I'm like, whoa, no, Monkey, we can't kill him. But then I thought, yeah. No more fucking raisins. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, One Thomas less Fury. fucking vampire. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Reason right now. Yeah. So he gets the yeah, so he's like, why should I be leaving? He's like, he shouldn't. Don't. I'm a good liar. One of the best. I'm like, you're really not helping your case. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so then he's like, yeah, Bianca, double cry. <laughs> well, Thomas, she's what we like to call a bad guy. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's when he's like, yeah. See, and here he does know because he says they have Dresden's woman. So, see, he didn't know it was his girlfriend. Uh, you know by the yeah. end of it. Don't know by the beginning. He doesn't necessarily know. By the time he's kicking her into the crowd, that was like the last thing that happened before Dresden passed out. And here he is knowing. So, oh, I would say. Yeah. So, I like that once Michael gets that sword, it's, it's like a switch has just been like instantly <sighs> right. like gone. He's like, there's more work to be done. Ha ha. Yes. And both Harry and Michael confirm that it. Still has his power. They didn't undo it. Well, yes, yes that was Which, it. Because Harry can sense as soon as he goes for the case, he starts to feel the vibration in the mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, and then flips it open and ta -da! so it's extra. extra make it do it slowy thing. Do yeah, it, so, do it, do it. <laughs> it's extra props to Thomas that he was able to recover it before they were able to use it yes, on someone else, right. and that he himself didn't yeah. use it either. Although it sounds like there was kind of a match. Well, I think yeah, Thomas. I don't see Thomas being. I think. Well, I mean, again, the only reason he would have had it, somebody came at him, and I don't know if that still would have been the same. It was still a room full of vampires that wanted to kill Thomas. Harry got a lot of them. He didn't get all of them. Yeah, I Whatever. know, but if Thomas was simply using it to defend it, like, the reason no, no, no. Harry did is because Harry was trying to get out I'm not saying he used it to defend it. I said he recovered it at some point, too. No, I know. And I'm... has gone for the last day and night, he said, being chased by Bianca's people. Yes, you just said that Thomas didn't do anything and Lee didn't use it, and I'm just saying. I don't know for sure in the same way, like, if Thomas had just used it in straight self-defense, that it would have undone it the same way. Well, I, I don't know. It... I think a vampire in and of itself just can't use this Maybe, shit. but I mean, yes, I see that he wouldn't but yes, um he didn't take but yeah i was gonna say the it. fact that yeah i'm assuming there was just a lot going on because after he flung mavra and she lost her grip on it then they were all too busy being burned out and just grabbing what they couldn't run that yes it's fortunate again maybe that's a little bit of that divine intervention that like skittered off under a bush somewhere or something and like mavra didn't have time to like hunt it out in the chaos you know so it was like one of those where's the, where's the fucking oh, yeah. you know and then but yes I was going to say, at least, yeah, we know it was interrupted before then, and everything is still fine. I will say, though, it's one other thing to throw in there, that Harry also destroyed all their food sources, so they didn't even have any way to top themselves up <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after all true. that, you know? <laughs> so Th Thomas lets them in on more information, that the, the, the mansion was, in fact, left intact, and that the vampires retreated with the uh, guests inside mm -hmm. of it, and so that not... not they weren't all destroyed. Yeah. And that the vampires are t turning the guests and and are feeding on them. Yes, because she's allowed to do that now that she's yeah. all elevated. She can make her own without permission or whatever it is. Yeah. And, yeah. and Mavra also took some some, yeah. some guests with her and that she's left town. 
She she took one for the road. Right. Mm-hmm. And Had to lunch. <laughs> the mansion is now guarded by humans, by mortals. By mortals and things. nasty guns. With nasty with guns. With assault rifles. Yeah. So, yeah. Torched all. The yard and everything was lost. Michael called the fire department and got them there pretty quickly and contained it that way. Um, and then, yeah, that was, yeah, exactly. It was like the, the fire chief goes into what the fuck and then comes out, oh, no, it's all fine. <laughs> and then, yeah, they discovered that, yeah, there's, there's not going to be anybody looking into the the fire like the police because SISV yeah. says that he talked to Stallings because Murphy was still out of it he talked to Stallings Stallings tried to get SI involved and then it was like no police at all so they figure yeah she's got her Higher fingers up. in City Hall or whatever mm-hmm. and then furthermore Thomas fills in the fact that Bianca granted a couple of these uh, thralls to Mavra kept yes. the other half for themselves and they're pretty much yeah. turning the majority of them to rebuild their ranks so now she was just saying yeah but I was going to say that Justin well, does yeah, figure but, there's going to be some looking into the missing persons but there's not going to be no police official police but investigation into Mavra specifically got some of them for herself it wasn't all being turned into red court Mavra's been allowed to take some of yes. them to turn into her black court or a separate eat thing. them or whatever she was going to do with them yes well no she's it specifically says that she's got hungry new mouths to feed oh yes a couple of new mouths to feed yes so, yes yeah. You're right. You're right. You're like right. We're specifically getting a couple more black vamps on the court, which we know is a rare mm-hmm. thing right now. They're very decimated in numbers. Mm-hmm. So yes, the I think after the amount of time that they, they've, it sounds like it's been a while since since. Uh, and they've they had got, a couple hundred years too. Yeah, like how come they haven't replenished like, their numbers? Is like, and on so. all that time, yeah, the but black th- court hasn't built up again. But I mean, they also haven't been allowed to. You know, the white council's been a little bit on the same. Well, team. I was like, going to uh, say, uh, I'm assuming that yeah, some of the black court. I mean, they might be allies, but let's face it, probably the white and red maybe can't do it overtly. But I'm sure behind the scenes, they're not helping them get. They're happy to keep the black court. Yeah, but I mean, I think mm-hmm. isn't that a little bit of his point with the whole Stoker's big bad book of that? You know, is that it's a lot if, easier to kill them off than it is the other? Yeah, even well, regular courts. humans. Yeah, you know? if regular people are coming across it they immediately go for a steak to the heart or a thing of garlic yeah. or holy water so you know having I mean, again, you know it's, might be harder to yeah having like probably i don't i don't really know what the numbers are but let's say i don't know 30 percent of earth well it wouldn't be 30 percent that's actually wearing a cross around their neck but at least you know like I don't well a yeah. good percentage of the population is just walk across the entire earth is walking around with a cross around their neck or putting garlic on their pizza, you know, like... <laughs> yeah, so, well, that's true globally. Yeah. You know, you don't have to worry about, well, garlic's only native to this area. It's only those yeah, people like, are... Now it's exactly with our global communities. It's so yeah. much easier to... So, yeah, I could see that part of it, that that not for lack of trying, maybe. And on top but. of that, um, it's also sunlight. This just hurts the blacks more than anything else. We know that the white court can go out in the sun. Yeah. And, and we, the reds, too. And we know the reds can go out in the sun if they have their flesh suit on. No, because that's how he blasted Bianca. She was in her oh, flesh Oh, yes, suit. even in the flesh, they can't go out. So, yeah, the white, basically, the white we learn. Are the only ones who can go out in the sun. Basically, yeah, they don't matter. But the, the blacks yeah. and reds can't handle the sunlight. So just one so more, you know, one more... Handicap, handicapped on the black court, you know. That yes, yes. Our cities are getting much safer at night. They're all lit up, and we have cars and mm-hmm. things, and it's not so much riding around in dark alleys. And yeah, if you don't have, you know, an underground city underneath your city, yeah, very <laughs> your monster limited. problem is very limited. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Chicago, with your underground city underneath the city. <laughs> well, so once they find out that they've got um, th- that, th- that there are vampires still at the mansion, and that it's being uh, fortified. They they decide that they want to ask and Susan are still somebody there, who yeah. who knows a bit about the mansion, which is Lydia. Yes, and they go to yes. try to see if she's awake because she has been sleeping for the first time in ages. Oh shit! Wait, what? <laughs> so she wakes up. What did you just well, say? Well, somebody wakes up. <laughs> Not I don't Lydia. like this. Like he's checking on her, and yeah, Michael's like, yeah, I don't think she's had any sleep in days, and all of a sudden that's when the penny finally clicks. For which, I mean, granted, Dresden's been through a bit in the last bit and was both, you know, physically and mentally roughed up in the last. But yeah, he's like, oh shit, and like literally starts to back up, and she's like, ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck me. <laughs> so uh, Lydia's a little bit smarter than you are, Dresden. <laughs> And you just get just thrown been... all back to the beginning of this when she's talking to you. Like, what was her prediction? And he even says as much, Cassandra's tears, she can see the future. Well, she's already given you a prediction. How did you fucking listen to it, bitch? Right. right. You think that she would be listened to, but because of that curse, she can't. They, Fire. No matter how hard they try, they can't seem to listen. Right. Fire and destruction, and you were at the center of all of it. 
Well, and right. she also says about herself, that, mm -hmm. um, the um, nightmare is following her. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she like had three dreams about the nightmare following her or something. I can't think of her exact words, but literally it's like she like we know for a fact the nightmare has been on Lydia's heels this whole book, right? Yeah. Right. And she's been keeping herself awake this whole book, you know? Well, that's the thing, is that she's been trying desperately to, to not stay sleep awake, because so. of... Well, that's a long time to stay yeah. awake. Like, that is enough yeah, to it drive is. somebody and insane and your brain starts swelling well, and doing all sorts of she, terrible she shit. She got some some reprieve when the vamps got her, because then she was just drugged up and yeah. doped. So, one, he doesn't need to possess her, because that's with the allies, too. If she's mm. all dopey and he can't really do anything with her anyways, you know? So, I'm mean, like, you think, yeah, she finally got a little bit of sleep in between the... But, yeah, she's been up for, like, a couple of days between, like, Dresden and the church and getting snatched. And then now she's going to be right, I forgot right about back that, at... She was drugged. Yeah. yeah, right. But now she's, yeah, exactly all before. So, I mean, she's still not doing... Like you say, I mean, yeah. Michael still basically... Like, I don't think she slept well in the last few days and hasn't... And you know, so there, there hasn't been much... Yeah, that's what kind of tips him off. But, but that must have been amazing. Like, imagine to be Mavra, you know, and just know that they took your little pawn into their safe house, you know? Like, she must have been like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a Trojan horse, like... A fully, fully means. Trojan horse. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead and rescue her. Rescue her. Lydia, right? Because, yeah. again, like, imagine, like, again, like, it's horrible to say... Mm -hmm. But had Thomas kicked Lydia into the fray, and I know I was even semi thinking Michael carried that. out Susan, right? That would have been yeah, because Susan isn't on the radar better. for for Kravos at all. Well, like no, yeah, no, not at all, right? They wouldn't have had that connection to her, right? And as much as yes, yeah, sorry, Lydia, and the whole point that Harry threw this punch was to save Lydia. It's at the same time, it's like Thomas, you kicked the wrong girl. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you could have just flung Lydia out there and say, but at the same time, Harry was still a little ways back up the, you know, I know, it wasn't I know, the same. I know. I know. But yes, 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 yeah, she had been, so, um. So Lydia picks Dresden up and throws him towards the fireplace. Yep. I'm like a little cliffhanger you again. should have kept her from sleeping. Or killed her before she woke. Which, I mean, okay, granted, but at the same time, it's like, the whole fucking point is we were saving her. How would we kill her before she woke up? We kept her from sleeping. That would have been helpful, but it really was not going to occur to them, like, well, we just rescued her. I guess we can kill her now. Yeah, right. <laughs> But, I mean, par for the course, you know, Harry always figures it out a second too late. <laughs> yeah. Right. At the crux, so. And it does, yeah. again, make for great yeah. cliffhangers of at course. the end of the chapter. It makes you really want to keep <sighs> reading that yeah. next one. Some days just doesn't pay to get out of bed. Can't you put that book down her. yet. Can't put it down. <laughs> <laughs> this concludes our episode 8.17, Things We Lost in the Fire. Thank you for listening. You can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and macanellies.ca. There we have links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. <laughs>